Hello everyone, welcome to the Sports Khabri podcast and uh, I'm Anshuman Joshi. I'm once again joined by Arunava Chaudhary and uh, today we are going to start talking about Indian football. This podcast series, we are hoping to start dialogue as they say and uh, we want to talk about Indian football more and more because uh, ra- most pertinently because we have the the new, new, new guard is in, in the IFF and uh, they have k- k- unveiled their idea which is they have dubbed vision 2047 and uh, they are now they in the, they are talking about put indian football and its overall in the long term and arunava thank you so much for joining us once again and uh, so yeah let's just dive straight into it this is what we are here for we are here to talk about indian football and the most impo- the most the biggest thing that has happened recently is the, is the iff unveiling Vision 2047. So let's dive straight into it. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Have uh, and uh, based on the uh, reaction that you have heard uh, uh, regarding in it, that you have you have heard, listened to people talking about uh, uh, the bro- the brochure and the entire thing as well. What are your thoughts? And what are your thoughts on the reaction that is receiving on an average? Yeah, thanks uh, first of all for having me and uh, I think my, my first reaction was it was good to have such a plan. I think it's, you know, give you gives you guardrails in the sense of, you know, what is your vision, where do you want to take Indian football uh, in these next 25 years. But it's also very, very clear that the people who are in charge of the AFF will most probably not be there in 2047 in the positions to run the federation. So that's the first fact. Um, the second thing is um, they've divided it into what I've always liked into short, mid and long term sort of uh, plans and strategies. And, and I think um, this, this, these plans up to 2026 brings an angle of accountability for the president or for the secretary general in, in regard to what you have, have you achieved in this sort of three year cycles they've created. Uh, eight three-year cycles. They're working on those, and and I think that's an important thing that is happening. And and uh, and you know, if if you look at what what, without saying it, for example, it's, there is no mention of India qualifying for a senior men's World Cup or a senior women's World Cup. But you're talking about you know being top four in Asia, which would then incline of indirectly saying that if you're top four in Asia, it means that you potentially would be qualifying, would be playing in the World Cup. Uh, but especially the 2026 uh, uh, aims of, 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 of to achieve, you know, starting off with the league system, I think that's very, very realistic of having 14 teams in the Indian Super League, 14 teams in the ISL, uh, sorry, in the I-League and, and uh, uh, 12 teams in the I-League 2. So, you know, the top three structures. Uh, of Indian football, I think that works relatively easily. But if I go into other things, uh, a turnover of 500 crores uh, looks very, very ambitious. The men's team top 10 in Asia, the women's team top 8 in Asia. Um, you know, those are, I don't want to call them pipe dreams, but to some extent they are because, you know, then we we need to be beating the top Asian sides on a regular basis to be able to to get into that position. Because if in, by 2026 we're top 10, we would be in with a shout to qualify for the World Cup in North America. Right. So, based on the like, based on the text that was offered in the brochure, they seem to be covering a lot of the bases, right? And uh, they talk about okay, we want to overhaul refereeing, we want to boost the grassroots programs, and uh, the one thing that really stood out to me in the early pages was that uh, the AIFF, this brochure that has been provided by the AIFF, really wanted to point out the fact that there was a certain lack of governance and uh, the, uh, the the things were not simply being done right. And uh, there was... So do you think that was more of an introspection thing or it was more of the new guards saying, okay, we are the ones who actually know what's, what's up and the previous guys, they didn't really have an idea. So we are here and we know what to, to do and we are providing you with this 25 year plan so do you think it was more of uh, uh, an introspective thing or it was more of a uh, the blame game just putting it all on the previous people that came before them i would say blame game i think uh, in the sense of that i've been following indian football now closely for 25 years so I've, again if i look at added up from sort of uh, from the year 1998 to to to, to 2023 um, uh, one has to honestly say that the AFF has come a long way. I think if a lot of people will not believe 
that in what state the AFF was in 1998, that the office uh, was uh, of the Federation was in, in, in the home state of the secretary, who, who was an honorary position, who had it in, uh, it was in the Nehru Stadium in, 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 in Guwahati. Then Albert Colasso came in the year 2000. His office was in the Nehru Stadium in, 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 in Fatorda. Uh, and then Football House was only built in 2005. Uh, Kushal Das came in, in as a secretary uh, in, in, in 2010. You know, a lot of things have happened. And I think, um, I think this is, a, if you like the people or not, if, if you like uh, the, the presidents that were there before that or not, is, is 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 to me a non-starter because I think you you need to respect these people. Have they done everything right? Of course not. They've not done everything right. They've done their mistakes. And I think if you ask them honestly, I think you know not maybe in public but in private they will tell you that you know not everything that we've done you know is right or we haven't done enough. But I think if you see you know when I started IndianFootball.com in 1998, there was no coverage on Indian football at all per se. You know there was no coverage. There was the little bits and pieces of articles in newspapers. Television channels didn't bother about call it, uh, you know, reporting about Indian football. And I think from that perspective, looking at you know that football house was built through through a FIFA program in two thousand five. A lot of things have happened uh, over the last two and a half decades that I am following Indian football closely. Um, and and I think this is disrespectful to say to come out with a plan and say, listen, there was nothing. And we are putting everything in order. It's like saying, listen, there is no track record of things and this and that and everything. Sorry, there is a there is a CRS system with a with a player's database, uh, you know, the coaching database. All these informations, of course, are internal. They're not they're not you know you know public knowledge as per se. I think that is that is an area which is a weakness of the AFF. But I think that a lot of things have happened over the last uh, you know years, decades. And and I think now the question was is that you know if, even if India was you know if 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 you're if you're running a marathon let's let's compare it to a marathon we've maybe run one or two kilometers of that marathon we've got forty kilometers still to run and we need to gain pace we are actually walking we're walking a marathon at the moment so you know with with the examples of what Mr Zeplatter started in two thousand seven you know talking about the sleeping giant you know that's already. Yeah, it was in, in, in December 2007 in Joburg. Uh, I happened to be there. Uh, that's 15 years ago, right? And per se, if you look at Indian football in the state that Indian football is, whatever people say, we are, you know, with the with, with the ISL being around, we are still in, the, in, in, in world football context, we are still a sleeping giant. And, and we need to get out of that slumber. And I think that is, a, that is important. And I hope that this roadmap really rejuvenates people and, and you know, brings brings an, an you know uh, an, an, an enthusiasm into it also a, a level of willing to work and develop things and and you know that the stakeholders play their part i think the aff can put out as many plans as they want and we've had plans uh Praful patel put out a plan in 27 uh, 2016 with with kiran rijiju as, as a sports minister then for 2026 um rob Ban did a did a technical roadmap plan with Lakshya in 2013 plans have been delivered but you know we are not japan for example you know when they started thinking about football they put out a 100 year plan and a special focus by 2050 we want to be world champions but the japanese work the way the japanese work in india we cannot work like the japanese let's be very very clear about that so therefore you know we have to you know have to do things as we can there's there will be a lot of jugar in getting india somewhere uh, there are certain aspects which i found which don't make sense i think uh, in saying that uh, it does not make sense for India to host large competitions, I think, uh, is wrong. I think if you look at 2017, uh, the Under-17 World Cup and the infrastructure that was built for the Under-17 World Cup, uh, that is very, very crucial because that is very often now the basis of what the ISL clubs are using. Not only ISL clubs, but also the, the ILE clubs, you know, the, the infrastructure that has been built. Um, um, also... They say, you know, you've got governments like Odisha coming forward and supporting football. Maybe all of these things would have not happened if that under-17 World Cup in the way it projected India, it projected its football, not only to the outside world, but also to the inside of, of you know, to, to people in India. I think those things would have not happened. So therefore, I think we need these large-scale uh, tournaments also to push our own teams. You know, the under-17 Women's World Cup, I think, was a very good reality check where our youth women's football stands. We don't have a league structure. That's a reality, right? So therefore, um, certain things I find is 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 yeah. It's 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 
very demanding on one side on the other side certain things are doable but i think i think it's good that there are challenges in there but i think there are two things i think we we in the short term we need to have a pragmatic approach pragmatism i think is a very very important thing of what can be done what can be what do we need to what do we want to achieve what do we need to achieve and on the other side is accountability um and this is something that the old regime or indian football uh, over the decades got away with there has been no accountability per se and i hope that this regime will be accountable for what they do or do, rather not do and and you know and if if they do things wrong then you know someone has to stand up and say you know i did it wrong or i'm sorry or whatever and not you know push things under the carpet as has been sort of or is sort of a, a, a very often a mentality uh, thing in india and indian sports right so when we talk about long term gains and this is what this brochure sets out to do it wants to talk about long term plans so long term success is really predicate on what you do on the short term because what you do in the short term eventually will compound into the long term success you are talking about and uh, while in the this uh, whole idea has been dubbed of vision 2047 a lot of uh, focus has been given to the year 2026 as well where uh, at least the aiff is saying that okay we want to see some changes we want to see some ideas implemented and talking about implementation one thing that i really found was lacking in the system, in the brochure was that there were a lot of theoret- theoretical things mentioned a lot of bases were covered but on in an idea really the practical implementation of what needs to happen to make sure that these the sectors that we are talking about are in 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 turn uh, growing so that is something that i found was maybe uh, directly not there and uh, what, do, what do you think do you think that uh, knowing that okay 2026 is also an also a year that the aiff has year marked okay that we need to see some progress in this in this year as well and be basing basing ourselves on the te- the literature that was provided in the brochure what do you think uh, do you think that uh, there is a uh, the uh, the practical implementation uh, the the mind is there at least the the, the the does the aiff have the the required skill set to at least kick start the practical implementation of all these theoretical ideas that they have talked about i think there's one thing that before coming to that i think which is very important is to say that this this vision 2047 um is and reads like a marketing and pr plan you know it's trying to sell a dream a vision to to the outside world that is one um i think that the real work if not started needs to start now that is where this implementation work st- sets in because again we are talking about generally the structure of club football the structure of refereeing uh, the structure of of coaching the structure of you know infrastructure has been mentioned in this um all of these things are interlinked because for that you have to lay the foundation the aff needs to have a foundation how do i grow my national center of excellence they want to sort of copy st george's park what what there is in england um and it doesn't matter you know if you mention st george's park or uh, clairefontaine in france or the dfb campus in frankfurt you know the french have theirs in spain all of them have them now to and it sounds if you look at it it sounds like hey listen we did we don't have a center of excellence you know this is one thing that the old regime is actually left behind is actually a plot in calcutta where there at least is now a building and two training grounds which mainly is used by isl and i league teams uh, as a national center of excellence so so that is something that's what i'm saying we're not starting from zero we are already somewhere and we need to build on that now the question is um there's also been a lot of uh, a change of personnel in the aff and and i hope that that you know that that people understand that this is not no sarkari job that's not a 9 to 5 job your heart needs to be there i i i would like to see people who are not working in the aff for the sake of having a job or working there but they who are willing to work 24/7 for the development of indian football i think that's the key of uh, only then will it succeed if i if, if the passion the 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 mind is there but i also think that 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 knowledge and understanding is also very very important and 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 if those things come together people who have the ability to 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 talk to corporates to sponsors to to your uh, you know your 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 marketing partner fsdl who's not mentioned anywhere in this plan you know who is actually funding you mainly at the moment um so i hope all these things come together because otherwise this will be just another plan on paper and it's going to be another paper tiger and again when we talk in 2026 most of the stuff is sadly then not achieved 
Yeah, I mean, I'll just take one example of the marketing uh, thing that uh, that keeps coming up because in the brochure they've they, they've said that they aim to raise their overall revenue by 500%, which immediately uh, uh, strikes out. And one thing that they themselves mentioned in the brochure was that the AIFF has observed that uh, a lot of st- a lot of investors are not coming out into the football business side of things now. Anyone on a global stage who has followed football, uh, the business side of football from even a, a certain distance will tell you that you don't enter the football industry to make money and compound and grow your capital gains because that's just not what happens. So that is one of the reluctance that the investors have when they come into investing football and the AIFF is then saying that, okay, we are, uh, we are, we have observed that people are not, people are very reluctant uh, in investing their money into football without really uh, going into the details of why that is. And on the other side, they have this idea of growing their revenue, quintupling their revenue in three years time. So again, that brings the question that, okay, where is the realism? Is the, if you're talking about long-term plans, even your short-term plans need to be realistic. And this does not sound as something that is realistic. I think it's very challenging. I think the financial angle of Indian football is, I think, the biggest drawback of Indian football. If we see the plan that a Japan has had, a China has had, a Qatar has had, if you look at what the Saudis are doing at the moment, they all have the money power behind them. Money has never been an issue in doing all of this. I mean, just see that the insane amount of money that Cristiano Ronaldo has gone to Al Nasser for with the support of the Saudi government. Uh, we don't have that. India is not in a situation to commit that kind of money. Corporate India is not there like, you know, when the J-League started that the biggest corporates of Japan, the conglomerates which we know, be it the Hondas, the Mitsubishis, the Yamahas, whatever you want to call it, all of them came forward. All of them came forward to do it. Uh, we have a reliance. We luckily have now the Tatars and JSWs as well who are involved. Uh, if you see uh, uh, you know, a club like East Bengal, uh, the chief minister has to be begged to, to help them to get someone to actually as a corporate to come forward for the club to play ISL. That's the reality of Indian football. The worry is, of course, on one side, is that if AFF is actually able to increase its money up to up to the 500 crores that I mentioned, it would be great for the AFF. But we need the commercial viability of our club football, at least of the top tier ISL, to come in in the next five years for the overall pyramid of Indian football that they're trying to create to survive. Because that money will tickle down the system. And that is that's mentioned nowhere. Because that is the biggest, biggest challenge we have. Because your problem at the moment with the with the ISL per se is, is that your television rights holder is a stakeholder in the league. So they don't pay anything for the rights. And now they are talking 2024 to switch on another channel, which is also owned, you know, the same owner of FSDL would then also own most probably the television rights. So question is, are they going to pay anything for it? Would the open market actually pay for any Indian television rights for football? I mean, that's a reality. It's not a football reality. It's a reality for every sport outside of cricket. And, and therefore, if as long as we don't solve these problems regarding commercial viability of the clubs, we can talk about everything, anything, whatever you want to. Uh, nothing can happen in the system. I think that's, that is not looked at or mentioned in this. Because, again, I think this is a, is a, is a marketing product. With a positive spin, it's good. I like it that way on one side. But on the other side, somewhere you need to also address the real problems, the real elephants in the room which are there. There are multiples of them. And therefore, even if we take one step forward, that's the other point that I see is there are countries around us who are taking two, three, five, ten steps forward at the same time. So it's not, it's, you know, people say that, you know, we should leave South Asia and move to another zone and this and that and everything. Teams around us in South Asia are going to be improving quite a bit in the near future. So, you know, I think we'll come to that topic of why a little later. But, but you know, we need to be careful. We have dreams. Everybody else, there are 211 nations who, are, who have dreams, who work on projects. I take it, you know, I'm sitting here in Germany. I take the German example. We failed at this World Cup and then everything is being questioned in Germany. And a lot of things are actually going right in German football. We have some of the best young talent. It, it is just, you know, maybe that ball against Japan, if it doesn't go out, if it goes out and is given out and that goal not given, Germany stays in tournament. maybe Germany wins the World Cup. Who knows? But these margins are very, very thin and fine. And whenever we've had the chance to cross that threshold, you know, 
2018, when the when the under 70s or under 16s at the time had a chance to qualify on for the World Cup on merit, they were so close. They lost one nil to South Korea. Asian Cup 2019, you were so close. In the 90th minute, we concede the penalty against Bahrain, and then we're out. Otherwise, we move into the the last round of 16s. I go back to 2001. We had one point less than the UE. Otherwise, would have been in the final round of the World Cup qualifiers. That next step for the national team, men's team at least. Or the men's teams has not happened, and therefore to to take that jump, we are 19th in Asia, and say, listen, we can get to 10, is a huge jump for us, and that does not happen in three years. Normally, it takes 10, 15 years. We need to, in a 25 year plan also, the focus on grassroots and youth football is not enough for me. I would have had more focus, and therefore, this this is now a basic plan. Now this plan needs to be filled with meat, needs to be filled with substance, and I think that is the. That is the that is the main work that remains for the AFF. So you mentioned the commercial viability of the clubs, and I think that this is something that we we need to touch upon a bit more in detail. Like just take into account the top tier clubs that we are functioning in the ISL and the I League, and uh, what would you say is the overall situation of the clubs? Like, are they making money? Are they losing money? And uh, if they are averaging money, how much is that? Is it sustainable? Are these clubs sustainable in the long run? At least in the run that the AIF pl- is planning to implement all of this. I'm I'm always surprised um, looking at the numbers, uh, looking at the amount of money that is being lost by franchises, by clubs, and not since yesterday. They've been losing money since you know Indian club football started paying players. Um, You know that that East Bengal and Mohun Bagan have been a, have been losing entities financially since the day they've been created, so to say, right? Um, that that a, that a family club like Churchill Brothers has been able to sustain itself since the late 80s, um, not only in Goa but at the top level of Indian club football. If you look at but the losses in the ISL are just x times more. We're talking about 20, 30 crores that these clubs are losing every year. I think. There is one club which could move towards sort of break even. That's Kerala Blasters, but Kerala Blasters is a very unique story with its fan following, with its sort of uh, the way it's become interesting to sponsors. But if the Blasters, for example, next year aren't successful as they are at the moment, will the fans stick to coming and and supporting the club, or will then you know the the, the crowds dwindle? I've, I've seen a few of the matches of Jamshedpur FC last season. You know, shield winners, and at the moment. The second last in the table, and the and and the stadium in Jamshedpur is empty. Uh, Northeast United plays in front of empty stadiums. You know they've had I think 500 something was the lowest attendances ever in 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 the in the history of the ISL. So it's a problem. It's it's and as long as there is no television money coming in that can be divided between the clubs, um, there is no other way of making the clubs come close to uh, break even. Or being uh, commercially viable. So, uh, if the majority of the clubs are in the situation where financial sustainability is a big question, uh, what does it say about this Vision 2047 that not a lot has been tab- uh, taken, uh, men- even mentioned that the current football clubs are hemorrhaging money, and we are we are creating a 25-year plan, uh, but we haven't really taken into account the fact that. the the current system the current financial system in place is such that money is being lost like i don't even want to take the example of mumbai city because they have the backers in reliance and city football group so it's a completely different story kerala blasters you mentioned that they are breaking even but there is also a peculiar situation it will result into something in the long term so what can the aiff do if we are this idea of vision 2047 what can Uh, the AIF do if anything to make sure that these become these clubs become at least bit more sustainable, at least being keeping in part with this long term idea that they are trying to implement. I think the key challenge is for the AIF to 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 you know do the groundwork for this to be possible. Uh, for that to be possible, they need to work with their commercial partners. That contract is up for renewal in twenty twenty five, and I think there. Commercial projections are also linked to the fact that the commercial partner would either be paying them more money or a new commercial partner comes in. And if a new commercial partner comes in, what actually happens to the ISL? I think that question is, you know, no one's asked that question so far. If by any chance 
FSDL Reliance say, listen, we are not going to renew the MRA. Um, the AFA won't even be able to generate 50 crores. And we're talking about 500 crores. You know, let's start with the federation first. On the club sites, it is imperative to get to, to sell your television rights so that you can earn as a league, as a federation, but especially the clubs. Only if they earn that. Or otherwise, uh, we've seen that in in the NFL. We've seen that in the in the in the I League as well. Uh, you know that that at some stage, and we've seen it to some extent in the ISL also. Um, that uh, after the initial burst, this the spending becomes less. Um, your but your talent pool is limited. Therefore, you spend on the players, and you stop spending or spending less on on things which are on the sides. You know, we've had a lot of discussion. Uh, on the Twitter spaces with fans and I said, guys, you talk about fan engagement. Fan engagement is an expense to the club. But if the club has to think, do I spend money on fan engagement or on marketing or on buying another player, they will go and buy a player because they all look after or, or look at the short-term success. So therefore, you know, clubs in Europe realize that that's why they try to keep a balance and say, listen, I try to spend less than 50% of my money on the first team salaries, um, which in India you can't because a lot of clubs are spending 70, 80, 90. I know there are clubs who are spending 95% of their money on the salaries of the players. And the salaries in India, um, you know, I'm happy for the players that they're earning that much of money. But if I look at the system and the ecosystem, I think if you look at I especially the ISL, then the salaries are actually way too high for, for what the clubs actually can afford. But being... You know, and therefore, th those are the challenge. Those are the biggest challenges. You know, the biggest challenges, and and um, they are yeah, they are not addressed in this uh, vision map. You know, except that it says you know the the, the league will increase to 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 fourteen teams in twenty twenty six, and uh, yeah, that's going to be the biggest question actually that needs to be answered because those negotiations, those contract talks between uh, um, the AFF and and, and FSDL needs to start now. So, so a clear picture emerges. Otherwise, again, they've done that in the past uh, when they've done these switchovers that it happened sort of in the last three to four weeks. And, you know, it's a messy, messy divorce. Right. So I've said that like multiple times up to this point that uh, the brochure at the very least from a marketing standpoint tries to cover a lot of bases or at least throws in the right words and everything. Uh, do you think that there is something that they have completely missed and uh, something that needed to be addressed right now? I think uh, what we just spoke about. I think you know how do you how do you uh, uh, um, strengthen club football? You know, I think that's the biggest uh, challenge that there is, and I think that has not been covered at all uh, um, because I think for the federation um, they've looked at themselves. Um, and and they've looked at uh, you know what are what are their challenges, um, and and what I liked uh, about the plan when I when I look at it, um, I like that you know our core areas where they've divided in, into eleven uh, um, players on a football field and you know did a sort of a lineup of a of a four two three one and you know and 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 they start off with governance, uh, um, and and you know and then and then come to different topics. But it's 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 uh, yeah it's 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 a it's a difficult thing because um, all of these things are interlinked, you know. And 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 on one side, of course, it starts with grassroots. It starts with the coaching of of of, of the kids. And uh, yeah, it's 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 a weird kind of scenario. Uh, um, and 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 uh, where where these are the key topics, and you've put them into the midfield, but you've looked at sort of you know a key element is is digital transformation. I know the fans are asking for that, and you know. Uh, live streaming on this and that and everything, uh, but again, if, if if your football needs to be there, you know, your football is is something. And again, you've got you put your competitions, your national teams, a little and talent identification development rather a little bit to the end, uh, which I thought would have been sort of I would have focused on them on uh, in earlier chapters, and I would have actually uh, besides you know the competitions, I most probably would have done a chapter on clubs and what kind of means and ways the federation would work with uh, the marketing partners with the state associations to strengthen the clubs because the clubs are the backbone 
of a football ecosystem in each and every country. Right. So another thing that uh, uh, I found was uh, way too theoretical and wasn't thought about in a practical sense was in the early pages, uh, the brochure talks about uh, the, as far as the national team football is concerned, that we need to come up with a national philosophy, national footballing philosophy. That is something that needs to be come up. And uh, I read that and I thought I, I thought of all the examples of countries with very identifiable national philosophies like Argentina, like the Netherlands. And uh, I thought I, I kept thinking that uh, it's it's like that the tried and tested method of what works and what does not work if, and what sticks as, as far as the ideas are concerned is solely predicated on success. And uh, the, the, philo the idea of philosophy is something that uh, may or may not come from the country itself. It's, it's, an, it's an organic thing that happens over decades, even centuries. And here they are in, a, in like talking about it uh, as if they're, they're planning to synthesize this in a laboratory. And it's just something that really stuck out to me. And I really, I read that and I thought that if I were a footballing person trying to read, I, I would not have write, written that. So again, the, 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 the the dichotomy that you have already broached upon that it, what is being written and uh, the difference it has between the theory, the theory and practical implementation it just does not add up so again that is that is something that really uh, stuck out to me like a so thumb the idea of creating a national footballing identity uh, and uh, so i just from coaching sense i just wanted to uh, get your thoughts on the um, on the matter like uh, from a coaching standpoint in the indian co in the national team setup what it what is it that we are lacking and what is the direction that we could take as at least as far as the coaching aspect is concerned um there are two or three aspects in this the first one uh, you've mentioned the netherlands uh, the netherlands with their 433 total football uh, and you've mentioned Argentina. Look at the Netherlands against Argentina. Louis van Gaal puts in two tall strikers and they get a 2-2 and get into extra time and even get into, into penalties. They literally junked their traditional football to, to get a result. Um, I don't know who, how many countries actually have a football philosophy or identity. You know, I think for example, Germany has lost its original football identity over the last decade. You know, Germany was about fighting and grinding out results. Now we, we play the beautiful game, but we don't get the results. Um, you mentioned Argentina. The South Americans take the Brazilians out. Of course, we will talk about Messi and all. But the South Americans, be it Argentina, be it Uruguay, be it the Chileans, they are rough and tough you know the, the you know if you see the defenders uh nicolas otamendi is a, is a perfect example of a south american defender right um so therefore the question is with india and and this is one thing which i feel overall is lacking i've spoken a bit about it in the twitter spaces in in, in the last few weeks is um that um a national identity for for india will be difficult I think we need to look at the regional regional strengths and 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 try to create something out of that because you know the way a Bengali plays, you will not see someone play in the northeast. The creativity of a of a Keralite will not be the same of the power of a Punjabi. So those kind of things need to come in. But if I'm talking about national identity again, and 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 and. So where did the Dutch total football come from? It came from Ajax and it came from Johan Cruyff, right? So which is the club in India which is going to show me the way? Is Mumbai City's way of now playing football going to be the way that India is going to play down the road? Or Bangaluru or ATK, Mohan Bagan or FC, FC Goa plays a very, you know, Spanish way of, you know, possession football because they have, they have four or five Spaniards always in their squad. Right, Spanish coaches. Mm -hmm. They had Zico at the start, so they've got this sort of flair football. Right, um, it's very, it's very difficult to say what is, what what is that. And then, when you're creating youth national teams, and we're now saying that we are uh, uh, pulling out of of having, uh, um, um, yeah, uh, of, of 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 the FF running an elite academy, we shut down the Indian Arrows. So it means that children with different inputs from their academies, from their clubs will come to the national federation and it sort of changes 
so therefore um yeah it's quite a challenging thing that that's that's happening to 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 football right so so we have talked about uh, the road map that the aiff has put out we have talked about the that uh, they have they are trying to uh, put, say all the right things whether they will be able to do that or not is something that is entirely different matter altogether so we have had a question in this reg uh, regarding this it was uh, uh, we received it on twitter from a user called c august dopan and uh, they asked why cannot instead of having to come up with a new road map why cannot the aff simply replicate another country's road map line and they mentioned the example of germany and i thought uh, i just uh, we just talk uh, bro, talk about this as well as to why india needs to come up with a bespoke solution instead of copy pasting another country exactly i think um again if i have a certain way of playing which i want to in 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 in, in grind into my system in grind to embed also in my system um it will be difficult i think the german model works for germany um the german way is a very 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 unique way i think you know the, the germans are in a certain way which can only be you know uh, compared to the japanese but again germany has a lot of inf had had a lot of influences over the last uh, 15 20 30 years with with the immigrants that have come to this country so the, the football has changed the football culture has changed uh, pep guardiola has brought a lot of changes when he came to bayern munich you know those three years a lot of you know germany's football is more possession based now than than you know it's it's like the spanish play um india needs to find its way but if i'm saying i'm going to play technical football i might lose out on the punjabi players if i'm, I'm, I'm you know my 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 northeastern guys are normally you know quick runners look at look at chankte look at bipin singh um again i have got different inputs in my football and i think that is something that we that we need to look at and need to consider um and and again i think a national way of playing is is i find very difficult because it depends whoever the national coach is um be it senior be it junior um that whatever player material i have right if i'm saying um i'm going to be playing i don't know a uh, uh, a 442 you know and and but i've got the option of playing a a a, a bipin and a chankte you know um then i need to find space for these guys or if i have a sahal or a brandon fernandez as a 10 how do i create a system that these guys can play so my system needs to be according to my player material i in india am not in a situation that i have a lionel messi and i build my team around a lionel messi or a, in the past a cristiano ronaldo or if i'm pele croif you know whatever You, we don't have that you know we we do have you know a lot of players of the, of the same standard of the same quality but i don't have that exceptional player who who will sort of drive my whole system and then i can build a system around it of course we have you know we bank a lot in, when it comes to scoring goals on sunil but but you know um uh, yeah it, it's it's uh, sunil is 38 so i think that's the next question that then cro crops up and the next generation needs to step up but ah a national system i don't know because then you have to interlink also with the clubs the clubs have different ambitions the clubs are looking at short term aims which is actually to to win matches to win titles um their ambitions are different than a national federation which works in sort of four years or two year cycles of a world cup asian cup a world cup and asian cup um so therefore i find it very very difficult and i and i don't know where this national philosophy should also come from to be honest true and uh, speaking of player material i think this gives us a very uh, nice way to segue into the last question that i had today mm -hmm. and which was that one of the things that we have uh, uh, we, uh, we keep coming across in the oci uh, is the oci matter when we talk about twitter spaces that okay what about the players that are playing overseas what about indian origin player overseas who are actually in the european setups who have had the kind of Uh, the, the the education that we are yearning for and why cannot we do that so this is an overarching thing uh, i we understand that this is something that is bigger than football bigger than sport itself in india but uh, this is a question that keeps coming up right now that why cannot we have oci players just have indian origin players into the system so i just thought we just have we be uh, bring this out again we talk about this uh, thing again why is it that people that indian origin players who are willing uh, who live outside of india are willing to play for the country are not allowed to do that 
government of india rules and regulations sadly um and as long as these regulations of of you know and also getting indian citizenship is not that easy therefore um uh, you know so far if i look at uh, ocis we've had uh, izumi arata who who came from japan spent a few years in india even married an indian girl and and still lives and works in india and works at the reliance foundation uh, nobody else has actually done it and and uh, that is you know we're losing out and uh, i mentioned it earlier if we look around in south asia um pakistan has done it pakistan could in potentially in the future play a completely uh, a complete team of players born and brought up in europe and maybe to some extent in north america bangladesh is doing it sri lanka is doing it nepal is considering of changing legislation to allow players of origin to play for them um we're going to lose out I, we're talking about 2047 of being top 4 in asia uh you know we need to defend our top position in south asia first you know because the competition is going to get harder in the, in the next few years so therefore um you know i've been fighting for this cause for over two decades i hope that uh, the indian government understands that it's of value to indian football it is not something that is you know that it's 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 um you know it's 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 value to the nation and if if that is understood i think that would would help and 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 make it much much easier and uh, yeah i hope that there is uh, some understanding in this topic and, and 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 there's a change of heart in the government um in the interest not only for football but sports in general as well looking at the paris olympics uh, in 2024 there are athletes of indian origin in other sports who could also enhance the quality of of india and and maybe be you know medal winners for india right and i uh, certainly hope so that it that it happens in the future at least there is an understanding on the matter so yes uh, that that is all the questions that uh, i had on the matter do you have uh, any closing remarks or now anything do you like to add yeah i think um again um coming to vision 2047 first of all it's good to have it i think uh, uh, that's an important one to have something on paper um now it's the time to fill it with life you know um uh, i hope a pragmatic approach is there to to try and try and build on things and um yeah and, and again checks and balances you know let's you know, hopefully we're in a position every 6 months or every year we are in a position to see how we are progressing developing what's what's happening with the plan um and then in 2026 you know will be will be the time of reckoning where where we can then ask kollan and and shaji and say guys uh, you know this these are the things that you promised when you did the press conference on the 7th of jan 2023 and this is where uh, indian football stands uh, in 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 the year uh, 2026 and and these things have been fulfilled or these things have not been fulfilled and and, and then we take stock of the situation so i hope that happens and 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 again i also another thing that i that i realized uh, after uh, speaking to a lot of people we had our own twitter spaces the other the other night uh, um, and that uh, um that people um should not be sort of spreading their sort of thoughts and ideas if they don't have the you know the understanding or the knowledge of it there's a lot of half baked truths being spread around and i think that doesn't help um i think you know and 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 then you can't question or or questions are being asked where question don't need to be asked there's a lot of questions that one can ask but you know again give 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 them some time let them work out things and hopefully um some of the things will work out in the best interest of indian football because that's why we love this game so much indeed and uh, uh, so anava thank you so much once again for coming on the podcast and i hope that we will have uh more more discussions on indian football because that's something i really do believe that something needs to happen more 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 discourse is uh, the way to go and uh, i hope that in due time as we have more of these discussions the state is uh, the standard of indian football only goes one way and that's up and uh, we will have those challenges it is a very challenging uh, task that the aiff seem to have undertaken and uh, we'll see in due time where they go and uh, listeners uh, please uh, let us know what to think of the podcast and please uh, let us know in comments so you can reach out to us on social media let us know uh, uh, how we are doing let us know how we can do better and if you like the work that we are doing please subscribe to the channel please uh, follow us on social media and uh, we'll be uh, we'll keep coming back to more uh, to uh, with more uh, episodes with more uh, discussions 
and we will continue talking about indian football so yeah that that's it for this episode of uh, the sports cover podcast and we'll see you soon bye bye bye